Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. This episode is hosted by Ian R. Buck and Ryan Rampersad, who will review the Audio-Technica ATH M50X headphones. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO71. So Ryan, hey, these headphones, you've had them for quite a few more years than I have, I think. I don't actually know how long I've had these particular headphones, but I've been a fan and a part of the, uh, the users of the, I don't even know what you call this line, the ATH line? Sure. The MX line? I don't know. Like, I've had these kinds of headphones for many years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm coming I'm coming to these from uh, a gaming headset uh, that I had for many years. It's a step in the right direction. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's get into why that was uh, a good step. Um, so a little bit about these headphones first. They are marketed as like studio monitors, but you can reasonably use them out and about as just like normal headphones for listening to music or a podcast or whatever from your phone and stuff. Um, so to that end, uh, the, the headphones come with three separate cables, um, a 1.2 meter straight cable, three meter straight cable and a three meter coiled cable. Um, and then the coiled cable has like threading on the end so that you can easily, um, screw it into the quarter inch adapter, uh, to make it very easy to plug it into a soundboard or other professional grade audio equipment right and i don't know if that's a standard thing that happens on higher end uh studio quality headphones from other vendors but mm -hmm. i thought that was a really nice thing to include i mean it's obviously a cost to audio technica yeah yeah but it's and, pretty nice yeah and and even if you it didn't come with those like i don't know i f sometimes i just feel like i find quarter inch adapters like in the weirdest places especially uh, once you know what they are and you look for them yeah exactly yeah um it also comes with a little carrying pouch, a little little leather pouch. I did see that you were using that when you arrived here. Yes, I did. Yeah. What, I, what if I brought mine with me? I, what, I, if, what if you did? What if I did? Um, so, yeah, the thing that differentiates these uh, from, like, the M40X, for example, is the fact that it comes with an extra cable, the, the 1.2 meter cable that's, you know, a very comparable length to, like, what you would expect from normal, ordinary headphones that you're going to use with, you know, plugged into a laptop or a phone in your pocket. Um, and then also the cups uh, have, like, an extra, like, silver ring on the outside just for looks so that you can look nice and snazzy while you're listening to stuff in public. Yeah, I would say that uh, these sort of have what I would consider a medium pad, uh, on the inside to, mm. for your ear cup. Yeah. Uh, they're not very thin, but they're not super thick. Yeah. There they're, they're are Sennheiser headphones that have what looks like an inch or two inches of padding, <laughs> and it's pretty intense. These aren't that. Yeah. I was really surprised when I went back to wear my Corsair Vengeance headset just, you know, for the purposes of reviewing them during uh, the last episode of Second Opinion. Mm -hmm. And I was very surprised at how thick the ear pads were. Right. And and so, like, there's a pro and a con. So, like, as they get bigger, that means they're putting more pressure potentially onto your ear. Yeah. Um, you mean the, the cavity also can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, and it's know. more weight. Right. Exactly. And... They're also more expensive to replace if you ever have to do that, yeah. most likely. So these headphones come in uh, at around $130. Um, I, I see them listed on Audio Technica's official website as $150, but like all the retailers that I've seen are around $130. Yeah, I believe I bought mine at the regular $150 price or so. Okay. Um, but that was over two years ago, so right. I mean, it's not that surprising. Yeah. They fluctuate. So how do these things sound? Pretty good. I think, yeah. Um, I, of course, they're a much flatter EQ than like the gaming headsets that I'm used to using, um, which is to be expected. And, you know, if you're, if you want these for professional grade, like monitoring and stuff, that's what you want. Right. So I would say this is the, like, there are cheaper alternatives for monitor grade. Mm -hmm. So like the... Um, MDR uh, V6 from Sony or the more modern variant 7506. Um, those are probably like in the eighty to ninety dollar range. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're saving a you know depending on how much these cost, that you're saving a little bit more. Um, but I would say somewhere around here, either those or these are sort of the entry level for studio monitors. Um, some people say that the uh, 50X isn't ideal for higher end production, like studio okay. mastering. 
uh, because there there is some colored audio in this, mm-hmm. whereas um, you know something uh, with like open ear headphones, open back headphones, yeah, um, with a better sound stage, uh, will get you something much closer to actual mastering quality headphones. Right, right, yeah, and that's that's the classic like closed cup versus open cup uh, uh, debate. Um, I'm on the closed cup side of things because I do want to be able to like not hear the stuff that's outside. And I also don't want people who are around me to have hear. to hear what I'm listening to. So yeah, I've I've considered um, since I've kind of remade the studio here, uh, getting some open back designs mm-hmm. just just to experiment with them to review them. Of course, of course, that's what we do here. Uh, but also to see if they actually make a difference. Um, one of the things that I read when I was designing the new studio was that actually monitoring and mixing with monitors and not oh, headphones sure. yeah. is actually even better. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing that. Nice. Um, I have noticed that sibilance seem to be like really, really emphasized in these headphones. Mm-hmm. Um, like I was, I was editing a few podcast episodes, and I just, I was like, "Wow, why are my, why are the S's so loud? What's going on?" And I, like, I thought that I had actually been like speaking way louder mm-hmm. somehow, but then I listened to it on a different set of headphones, and it sounded normal. So I was like, "Okay, it'll be fine." <laughs> That's really interesting. I I haven't personally noticed that, but I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to audio. <laughs> we've been we've only been doing this for six. Wait, what? Wait, Eleven wait, minus nine. Oh, wait, oh geez. wait, that's not how numbers work. Nope. <laughs> One minus nine, eight. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I would say that in terms of uh, sound quality, I like these a lot. Um, it took me many years. Okay, I don't know how many years it actually took me in real life. I used to use the ATH forty FS, mm-hmm. and those are the ones that I had in the studio for just years, for most of the studio's life, for for five years maybe. It took me months to get used to using the fifties over the forties. Okay, why? It sounded different. Oh, okay. I had to get used to how it sounded, and you know, like when you do something like audio editing over and over and over with the same tools, yeah, and you change a core component of that, it takes you a long time to know and relearn what to look for. Like, is this too low? Is this too quiet? Does this sound funny? Right. And it it can do that to you, no matter yeah. what you do. Uh, as for durability, uh, these things feel really solid. They're okay. I, yeah, I'm I'm not worried about them like falling apart on me. I don't take them out of the house, so for me it's not a big deal. One of the cool things about them is they can fold up, mm-hmm. right? So I suppose if you fold them every single day, like they might break eventually. Yeah. Uh, so one of the interesting things about these headphones is unlike other headphones that I have, mm-hmm. is the on other headphones I have the cables exposed. Oh yeah. And so that makes these a little bit safer to mm-hmm. use maybe long term. But I also don't know internally what that wiring setup is like. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, I do like that they have the interchangeable cables because that means that, like, if you, if a cable breaks, very easy to replace. In theory, but there's a catch. Yeah. There's a proprietary connector probably on the headphone side of the cable. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's cool because it's a little bit more feature rich than a regular 3.5 millimeter cable you know adapter yeah it actually goes in and then locks in place yeah i think i think that's the only real difference um oh no it it is a little bit smaller than a regular three and a half millimeter yeah connector and i don't know what that's called i don't know i think it's proprietary because i don't i've never seen it anywhere else um I definitely have seen ones that are smaller than three and a half millimeters before, but I I don't have a good frame of reference for if this is exactly that. That. Yes. Yeah. Um, the the little yeah the little hook that clicks it into place. Um, yeah. That's definitely pretty unique. So yeah. it it probably wouldn't be hard for another company to make something to, to make something like this. Um, but I have no idea if any do. Yeah. So if you ever needed to replace it, it's possible. But that means you have to actually go back to Audio Technica or pay more, probably. Right. Yeah. What about like the the leather pads and stuff like that? Do we know? Does I, I Audio Technica I, offer? They do offer them. I don't know what the pricing is. I would imagine it's comparable to the 40FS that I looked up. The 40FS when I had those, they were about uh, thirty to forty dollars for a set of pads. Okay. Okay. So I, I imagine it's comparable. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's good good to have this modular design. Yep. Uh, fit and comfort. So I discovered the hard way 
that weight is like the number one most important thing to consider uh, in in over ear headphones. Um, so these are 285 grams. Uh, I would say they're not too heavy, but they're not really especially light either. Yep. Um, coming from yeah a big huge gaming headset, uh, I love these so much. <laughs> they're they're pretty light. I like I like them too. Um, for me, like I have weird ears and I have a ton of hair. Yeah. And so I put my headphones over my hair. Mm -hmm. So my ears, then hair, then headphones. Yeah. You got that it, extra cushion. I, I do, but it also means that there's something else there. And so like th it can mess with me with certain other headphones. And these are fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I think the, the cup size is really good. It encapsulates like my outer ear without, yep. you know, feeling like cavernous. Yeah. It feels good. Yep. It's big enough for most people, probably. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, like, the the amount of weight that's being pressed down, like, on the top of my head versus on the tops of my ears feels pretty well balanced. Yeah. Um, it, it isn't, you know, super, like, way more on one than the other. So that's definitely, um, definitely a plus in the, like, comfort uh, arena. Um, oh, also, the cups, they swivel 180 degrees. And uh, this is a big deal when you're doing actual, like, real-life mastering. Yeah. Because you're often talking to somebody or listening out of closed back ear mm -hmm. and to the monitors. Yeah. And so that way you can just hold one up to your ear and it's not a big deal. Yep, yep. Um, and I, I really like like taking them off and you know resting like the headband around my neck mm -hmm. and then i have the choice of either just like having the leather pads kind of resting on my collarbones yep. which is more comfortable or i can swivel them around the other way and just have like a small set of speakers yes. very close to my ears i have done that many times yep i yep. love that yep. yeah so that brings us nicely to portability um yeah, like I said earlier, uh, the 1.2 meter cable is just right for using out and about. Um, as you said, the the headphones also fold up nicely. Um, unfortunately, in order to like fit them nicely into the carrying pouch that they come with, you have to take the cable out. Oh yeah, of the that headphones. Makes sense. Yeah, so like. That every time I do that, I do think about like, man, I'm just wearing down the little locking mechanism here a little bit at a time. They're over gonna and get over you again. somehow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and but yeah, like I I really like having the the carrying pouch. Like mm -hmm. it, it. Now it's a bag. Mm -hmm. It's a pouch. Right. Would so you prefer like a hard shell? I probably would, but that would also take up more space. Yeah. You know. Um. I I feel. I feel really confident in my ability to not put these headphones in a situation where they're going to be crushed. Yeah. But like it prevents them from getting scuffed up by rubbing up against other things right. in my backpack. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that the bag is is enough. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to talk a little bit about, yeah, the fact that it comes with, it, it's an analog headset that comes with the quarter inch adapter. Um, so yeah, like this, as it turns out, is what I needed all along in my life. <laughs> <laughs> headphones with an adapter yeah yeah because like i have been doing well i guess when we first started podcasting a usb headset was all that Adequate. i needed yeah it was fine um and i i do kind of miss being able to do clever things like you know having windows route different audio from different programs to different sure different yeah, interfaces yeah exactly yeah. so i could like have music playing through my speakers mm -hmm. while listening to a podcast episode that i'm editing through my headphones or something right. like that also don't do that yeah well you know <laughs> i gotta have fun somehow yeah um but like yeah now that i'm doing uh more things than just than just podcasting um you know i'm also like uh doing sound design for a theater company a, a few times a year mm -hmm. and you know being able to um plug straight into the soundboard that we're using live you know to mix all of the different actors uh, uh microphones together um like yeah being able to, to plug straight into that and listen to it in my headphones without having to output all that sound to mm -hmm. the actual speakers is like yeah makes me five times more useful at that job yeah <laughs> now and, and as you mentioned earlier you can just find quarter inch adapters yeah anywhere you can buy like 20 of them on monoprice for 20 bucks sure yeah so you're good forever but it's nice that they did it and of course you know it's also it's kind of a quality thing like maybe all high-end headphones come with this and we just don't know but maybe they don't and it's just nice to have it yeah um i do i do think that it's you know crucial to be able to have um 
an analog headset that you can take with you um, because like uh, I, I before I got these, I tried to edit podcasts on the MacBook uh, with my Bluetooth headset. And um, yeah, Mac OS did not play well with with the Bluetooth stack uh, yeah. with those headphones. And, it, you know, Bluetooth is tricky because there's the software implementation, there's the hardware implementation, mm-hmm. and then there's the quality of the antennas and drivers and, you know, so many different factors I can't imagine any kind of studio level quality editing po- being possible with no, Bluetooth ever. No. <laughs> so I'm okay, fine. Maybe Bluetooth 25, but we're 20 away. <laughs> yep. Um, and of course, since it's it's a you know an ancient technology, the three and a half millimeter cable, like it's it's compatible with more devices than a USB headset is. Right. Um, though, Especially with pr- pro audio. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Um, I, I did realize all of a sudden uh, while I was reviewing the, the USB headset that like, oh, wait, it's actually just as easy for me to plug these into my phone as it is to plug like my analog headphones into the phone because I need an adapter for either one. So, hmm. yeah. And, and you know, like phones are a weird case right now, but, you know, one day that won't be weird. Sure. Yeah. Like it's casual listening versus professional usage. Right. Yeah. So yep. it's fine. So. As I mentioned way, way earlier in the episode, yeah, these headphones get compared to their, like, slightly cheaper uh, brother, the um, M40X. Um, I don't have an M40X, you know, but here's what I have heard. Um, So the M40Xs usually go for, like, $20 cheaper or so than the M50s. Um, By by all reports, um, the sound quality is very similar in the two. Um, I think the M40X has a slightly flatter... Um, um, EQ. Um, but the big difference uh, is that the M40X doesn't come with the 1.2 meter cable, um, and then it doesn't have like the silver ring on the cups. Um, so those ones are only marketed as studio monitors. Um, Audio Technica is not trying to convince you that you can walk around and use them uh, with your phone. Which you could. Yeah, you totally could. Um, and like thinking about it, I feel like I probably would have been happier with the cheaper ones. Um, and then like either just dealing with the fact that I've got a long cable, uh, you know. Well, if so I'm it also to... ma- makes you wonder, does does the cheaper one have, can you replace the cheaper one's cable? Yes, it it, it is like. Keyed the same way? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because mm-hmm. like, yeah, maybe that's fine. Like, if they're all interchangeable, just get get a pack of cables and call it good for Exactly, it. exactly, yeah. Um, so, I yeah, in in retrospect, I probably would have preferred to buy the M40X and save a little bit of money, um, but the uh, the store that my parents gave me a uh, gift card to did not have the M40Xs. Yeah. They only had the M50s. So, this Se- is what I got. Seems reasonable. Yep. Yep. These are really nice. I, I would recommend them to anybody starting out in the... You know, editing space. You don't need great headphones, but you do need good enough headphones. Mm-hmm. And this is totally right there. Yeah. And one of the other things that's cool about these is these are so popular. You'll find them at your friend's house, or at your friend's office desk. Um, we have people at work who have these just on their desk. Oh, really? Who okay. just listen to music and try to escape the noise in the office. Yeah. Um, and so, like, they're very common, which means that if you go somewhere else and you need to, need to edit or you join somebody else for another podcast or you just need to use somebody else's headphones, you'll be used to them already. Right. Very common. Um, the other interesting thing about these is there's a special Bluetooth adapter that you can get for them. No way. And they'll click right into the little, you know, thingy, right? So, like, where the uh, regular cable goes, uh-huh. it will lock right in there just like normal. And it's a nice little Bluetooth adapter. I don't know how much charge it gets, uh, but one of the people at work uh, that I know has that on there. So they will use with their little MacBook Pro uh, the cable at work. But when he leaves for the day, he'll plug the Bluetooth thing back in, pair with his phone, and listen to whatever on his way home. Ryan, you shouldn't have told me this because now this is all that I want in the world. <laughs> it's it's kind of cool for casual usage, right? Oh, for sure. Like, don't edit with it, but it's kind of cool. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah that would absolutely uh like replace the 1.2 meter cable for my you right. know casual around around the world usage yeah yeah so there's there are features <laughs> yeah yeah modular design mm-hmm. it's a wonderful thing it is so ryan 
Where can people find you on the internet? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter, Ryan Amar, and of course on my website, ryanrampersad.com. Fantastic. I'm Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck, uh, and someday ianrbuck.com will be a useful website, but not yet. <laughs> This episode, along with uh, all the other episodes of Second Opinion, is released under a Creative Commons Attribution License, so if you want to use any part of this episode, feel free to do so, as long as you link back to the original page, which again was thenexus.tv slash SO71. If you would like to discuss this episode with other uh, listeners, please go to our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash thenexustv. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make uh, technology-focused podcasts, you can find us on Patreon at patreon.com slash thenexustv. Uh, Stay tuned for future episodes of other studio headphones that uh, that we're going to be comparing to these ones as well. Um, And check out a few of our uh, more recent episodes as well to see other types of headphones. We've got a few Bluetooth uh, earbuds. We've got some wired earbuds. We're we're going through a whole headphones kick right now. You can can hear it. Yes, you definitely can. (laughs) (laughs) All of these podcasts can be heard on any of those headphones. (laughs) That's good. At least there are no proprietary headphones. Yeah, that would be wild. Until next time. Have a good one. Have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence. Tech news is dominated by big, bombastic personalities. Developers, 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 developers. Sometimes we're filled with awe. Wow. Yeah. Sometimes they throw shade. Toxic hell stew. Sometimes they inspire. Live, learn, and love. On our show, Nexus Special, we recap and analyze all the biggest announcements and keynote events in the tech world. Subscribe to Nexus Special in your favorite podcast player today. I got one more thing.